This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hi, this is Dr. Deepak Meghur and today I'm sharing an interesting case of an 10-year-old boy who has this traumatic cataract. In this case, I'd just like to take you through my thought process on how to assess such cases of traumatic cataracts and how to plan surgeries in them. Now, he has had a penetrating injury to the eye about three months back. And let me zoom in here. We can see a small corneal scar at three o'clock position. And underlying it, there is also an area of plaque, which is probably under the intercapsule. And this area looks to be pathological. The rest of the capsule and the lens matters looks to be all right. But there seems to be this thick plaque in this quadrant. And I'm not sure about the status of the posterior capsule. The B scan shows a normal posterior segment. And when I observe the posterior capsule counter looks to be all right. So this is a little bit reassuring, but still it is not a foolproof sign. So let's begin the surgery. The surgery is being done under perival bar anesthesia. The child is cooperative and we have a standby anesthetist as well. So let me pause the case here and I want all of you to just write down the salient points on how you're going to plan the surgery. So what difficulties you're going to anticipate and what is the plan of action you have to deal with it. Okay, this is what I have written down. So the number one point, the most important or critical step is to get the rexis right. It has to be 5 millimeter. The reason is, in the event there is a posterior capsule tear pre-existing or otherwise, I have an opportunity to place a multi-piece lens in the sulcus with optic capture. That is the most critical step. Number two, if there is a posterior capsule tear, I should be ready with the necessary tools to perform antivitrectomy. The eye well of choice, well, if there is a posterior capsule tear, I would be ready with a multi-piece lens. And if the posterior capsule is intact, I would go ahead with a single-piece lens as well. But in this case, I am ready with the multi-piece lens. Now, coming back to the rexus, you know, because of this plaque which is here, this is this danger zone. So, I want to restrict my distal rexus margin within this plaque. So, let us see how things turn out. Capsule is stained, OVD is placed into the eye. I'm sitting temporarily and I make a 2.8 millimeter posterior limbal based main incision. So I'm going to use uh, the forceps to perform rexus. This is the Haldipukar forceps. The capsule is punctured, a flap is raised and slowly but steadily the rexus is navigated. The care is taken not to go beyond this area of plaque. And I need to remind myself that the capsule would be very elastic in these young children. So I need to use a combination of tearing and shearing technique to ensure that the rexus is under control. So the most critical step of the surgery is done. So we have a nice 5mm round circular and fairly centered rexus. The rest of the job would be a child's play. I thought so. So to separate the plaque from the anterior capsule in that area, I want to use a flat iris repositor, a spatula, uh, just to check that there is no adhesion between the lens matter there and uh, the anterior capsule. I don't want to do hydrodissection simply because in the presence of a pre-existing posterior capsule tear, it could blow up and there could be dropping of the lens matter into the vitreous cavity. So there's a reason why I'm choosing to do a hydro-free dissection using a blunt iris spatula. And that area, the thickened cortex of the plaque is still adherent to the capsule, but with the dissection, it has freed up a bit. Time to remove the lens matter. I'm going with my FACO tip. The settings are set to epinucleus mode. That is, the power is set just to 5%. We got a flow rate of 30 in a vacuum of 500. And in a couple of seconds, the soft lens matter is aspirated out. Now there is a giant plaque which is staring at me along with some cortex. I don't want the chamber to shallow, so OBD is injected through the left hand side port before coming out. So this ensures that if there is any hidden posterior capsule tear, it won't enlarge. So that's the idea of maintaining the antechamber depth always. The chamber is deepened, the phaco handpiece is withdrawn. 
I'm going to switch to bimanual IND to aspirate the remaining cortex. So aspirating the cortex is very easy all around except for this region where the plaque is quite adherent. It looks like it's adherent to the poster capsule. So I come in and now I'm going with my main incision. I'm trying to go with the irrigation cannula through the main incision and try to dissect out this plaque but it, nothing seems to loosen it. The hands are switched. The remaining part of the cortex on the right hand side is aspirated. Now at this time my mind is ticking now how to deal with this plaque. Should I leave it there? Should I try to deal with it later? So just thinking what to do now. Now if I want to remove the plaque what should be the strategy? Should I cut it using a scissors and a forceps or should I try to peel it just with the forceps itself? So these are some of the thoughts which any surgeon would be encountering. My go-to technique always is first try to strip it rather than cut it. There's always some cleavage plane available and if we get hold of the cleavage plane, we can as well peel this plaque successfully. However, there's always a risk of a posterior capsule tear developing during this maneuver and we should be mentally and technically prepared to deal with it. So I was ready with my tools for antivitrectomy in the case of a posterior capsule tear. So my go-to technique is to attempt peeling. So as I'm doing hydro polish at this, I can see flap which is fluttering, which is uh, proximal to this plaque. So I thought maybe by holding this flap, I get the leverage to peel off this plaque. I hold this free floating edge of the flap and then as I'm trying to peel, I'm surprised that peeling of the plaque was not so difficult at all. This pair of micro forceps was really giving me a good hold and I could slowly but surely strip off most of the plaque. At this point, I'm also getting a doubt that whether the poster capsule is also caught in my forceps. But my sixth sense does tell me that uh, there's no poster capsule, it's just the plaque. The proximal part of the plaque has been peeled out quite successfully now. See, the only secret is to be as gentle as possible and as patient as possible when we're attempting to peel these dense plaques which are sticking onto the poster capsule. Just have to persist, keep on teasing it and slowly but surely the plaque is going to disengage itself from the poster capsule. There is a momentary scare here because I'm seeing this wrinkling. It looks like a poster capsule tear but deep down I feel that it is just the plaque. The poster capsule is still intact. So the entire plaque is now peeled off barring to its attachment to the peripheral edge. So the distal edge of the plaque is still held on. Maybe it's a junction of the poster capsule and the enter capsule and this plaque is squeezed in between. That is the point of trauma I guess which has caused this opacification of the cortex. So now the plaque is attached to one end. How are you going to separate this? Can we go and cut it or should we just continue teasing it? So I would always defer using any cutting technique at this point. I would still like to go ahead and tease it. Now because it is attached to the equator of the capsule bag and if you are a little bit forceful, there's always a risk of exacerbating the pre-existing zonular weakness in that quadrant. So my go-to technique is tease it with the forceps but always provide a counter-traction. So in this case, I'm using the micro iris spatula to provide some counter-traction. It is pressed against the equator of the capsule bag as this plaque is being teased out. So we want a blunt flat instrument just like the spatula as in this case. It goes in and abducts against the poster capsule and the equator of the capsule bag. The moment we have this counter-traction, the plaque can be peeled out quite easily. So this is the plaque which I place it on the surface of the cornea. This is how it looks like and we were successful in getting rid of this plaque in a very very non-destructive way. So the lens is placed in the bag, OVD is removed from both front and behind, the ports are hydrated and that's it the case is done. The lesson learned from this case was whenever we have this plaque it's always worthwhile to attempt to peel it off. Many times you'll be surprised that you still have an underlying clear capsule and it's not mandatory for us to cause a posterior capsule tear every time we attempt a plaque removal. The secret is try to find the cleavage plane and be as gentle as possible and use a counter-traction using a second instrument that would be very helpful as it was in this case. To summarize, plaques can be peeled off the poster capsule without causing a tear in the poster capsule. 
So three important pearls which I'd like to share. Number one, maintain the chamber well with a cohesive OVD like sodium hyaluronate 1.4%. This will stabilize the bag and maintain the chamber as we are trying to tease and peel off the plaque. Number two, being very gentle with the maneuvers is very critical and the surgeon needs to be very patient because it is going to take some time. And finally, using a bimanual technique wherein the non-dominant hand is going to use a flat spatula to provide some counter-traction as the plaque is being peeled out is going to be effective. That was it. Thank you for watching and hope you found this helpful.